Hi guys, wow, there is a seismic swarm underway in Italy at Campi Fligri. It's still ongoing and uh, by the way, thanks for buying me the coffees. It was a long night to report about the first quake that started this event and that was high, a 4.0. This is really high for these Brady seismic events at Campi Fligri. There, everyone was in shock when we had a 4.4 um, in May, on May 20th. That was the largest one in decades. And so, and since then, they kept coming with magnitudes in the higher range. So a four, that is significant and it's still ongoing. So while I was making my video just during the night a few hours ago, there was another one, 1.7, 1.0, and then it went back up again, 2.1 again. And I want to tell you in this video, it was widely felt and intensely felt. It has affected trains. And other things happened. There was a landslide or let's say a cliff collapse. And I've got videos about that that I want to show you. But let's also speak about what this is because many of you have asked in the last video, well, is this just tectonic? Because there's two tectonic plates. Is this just seismic? Um, this is related to the Brady seism, according to the INGV, the Italian Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology. So the Brady seism that is related to the potential supervolcano Campi Flegri near Naples, near 3 million people. So the land is rising there. It's a Brady seism. It's rising because something underneath is rising up. It's filling up. They have just detected a shallow magma chamber at a depth of only four four and a half kilometers underneath Campi Flegri. So they previously thought it's deeper lying, so the magma would need more grinding up to reach the surface. But now that it's more shallow, it's even more concerning. So all this has been going on, like magmatic fluids, hydrothermal, or magma rising to the surface that is causing these events. And what is so concerning that we see the high range earthquakes with every earthquake swarm almost and it basically continuously it keeps rumbling maybe with a few days break but then the next earthquake swarm is happening so you see that list behind me with all the earthquakes that have happened and you see the 3.6 that was just on July 18th another earthquake swarm and there's more earthquakes the ones that you see on these lists are only the ones above one but it comes with micro seismic activity with a lot of smaller earthquakes as well. And here I want to show you the location again where this 4.0 happened on July 26th, uh, local time 1.46 p.m. in Italy at a depth of four kilometers. So basically where the magma chamber is, right? A little bit above it. So you see the red star? This is where the epicenter was. That is on Campi Flegri. Campi Flegri stretches into the Gulf of Pozzoli, into the water. It spans a hundred kilometers and you see all these darker like crater looking areas. There's more, not only the green ones, you can see it's lots of ditches. That is Campi Flegri, that are old craters. But one that is really active is the Solfatara crater near Pozzoli. There we have seen, I'll show you the list of the recent earthquakes. Um, right after that. There we see a lot of epicenters of these earthquake swarms. Um, so the red star is the epicenter. Then you see these yellow triangles. They have a lot of seismic stations and they have been working to put more into the water. And then they were running into the problems they were not sure is it sabotage, is it intentional, or is it just stupidity? But a lot of boats keep hitting these seismic buoys that indicate there's some instruments down there and they keep destroying them. There was also some destruction on land where they were stealing the batteries. These instruments are solar powered and vandalized it. So it was at the same time when the buoys were hit all the time. So. It was strange, I have to say, I don't know what this was, but they were worried and it cost a lot of money. So yeah, this is where they have their measuring stations and uh, also the, the red triangles. You see, 
it's close enough to have an effect the epicenter on all the communities that are lying around there but also naples on this map maples is further east to the right here of that map and uh, the the communities they gave us a map the communities that are directly affected are bacholi they have a population of 26,560 then monte di procida 12,800 Pozzoli over 80,000, um, Procida 10,000, and Quato 40,000. So that's quite a little bit of people that live there. They live basically on the volcano, on these craters, very fertile ground there. There's nice lakes. The U U.S. has inside the crater um, like a recreational area. So that's why this is so dangerous. And then I want to show you the next map here that shows the earthquakes that they have detected in this area over the last two years. And then you see these red circle lines. This is the area where the 4.0 today has occurred. And then you see on the right here in the legend, the bigger the circle, the bigger the earthquake. So if it's big, it's more than three. And there's been quite a few of that. So it is really recent and a lot of them. And you can see it's all Campi Flegri and where you see on land that big cluster, you can't even see Pozzoli anymore. So Pozzoli and that one crater that is called Solfatara that has these hot fumaroles coming out, that is where most of it is located. And it's really many, many, many. One thing that I find very interesting, and that's quite new, they just started this service in July this year, is basically a map that shows the ground accelerations that they record um, when these earthquakes happened. And this is basically a shaping map at a suburban and urban scale. And they have a dense network of, the, it's called accelerometers. I don't know if I pronounced that right, but they are installed in the area to record the intensity of the shaking and how it's felt by the people. And there you see the map, you see the red star again is, is the epicenter. And then the highest values, you see the red squares were recorded in Bacholi and in Pozzoli. And then you see it's Another orange one also high around Pozzoli, Solfatara area. But basically all these communities that we just named above, all the ones that we see here on that list, um, they felt it. And interesting map to show you the spread or the extent of these events. And this is a tourist area lots of tourists there in the summer they really like this area and that's why they were lucky that nothing happens when this cliff collapsed that i'll show you in a minute but what we don't see on the map is naples but also the event was felt not only in the municipalities of campi flegri but also in the area in naples they also have a map that confirms this and they call this the map of micro seismic feelings um, that they, this map is created by reports, by people reporting, did you feel it? They have a website. So there you can also see that where the star is, that's the Campi Flegri area. But then you see the blue dots goes really right into the middle of Naples and beyond that. So it was definitely felt beyond Campi Flegri into Naples, an area with more than 3 million people. So you, now you can imagine should something really happen at Campi Flegri, the panic will spread. So it's not like they outline in their local evacuation plans for roughly 350,000 people in the greater Campi Flegri area that they would evacuate, everyone would have panic. And imagine it, if there is an eruption, even if it's minor, you feel the shaking. The shaking will be probably way more intense and continues for a time. Three million people in Naples. And if you see the sky turn red with an eruption, you don't know if it's a super volcanic eruption or a small one. You start running. And that's what might be more catastrophic 
than a potential event, even if it's a small eruption, because people will run out and panic through these narrow streets. I mean, one of my viewers said, well, the solution would be they need to tear down homes and make wider roads for a better evacuation chance. And that's true, unfortunately. But these homes are ancient, so to speak. Some of them are very, very old. So they probably do not want to destroy these homes and, and change the, the feeling of Naples. Another thing that we should report about this earthquake, it was a very long lasting earthquake, a very, very long shock. And uh, it showed a very strong oscillation on this INGV Campi Flegre seismograph um, of this Solfatara there, although the epicenter was in the sea. So that strongly indicates that it is a Brady seismic event. So the shock was strong and long. So this quake, as I just said, was felt by many communities and it reached as far as Santa Lucia, Lungumare, Caracciolo, and the island of Procida and the island of Ischia. And they also, on that island, there also was an, an earthquake. They had their own earthquake when this event happened. A little bit before the big one, they had a 1.3 earthquake. So everything there has been rumbling. And as always with these bigger earthquakes in this area, this event was accompanied by a roar, as they describe it, that was heard by citizens that lived along the coastal area. So it really makes a scary, scary sound. And again, as I said, we saw two more earthquakes in the one range, but then a bigger one again in the 2.1 range. Um, here you see the chart, how it how it spiked. Um, this was less intense, but it was also felt in the Pozzoli area near the Solfatara area. So they felt it from that Solfatara area. And it was also felt again, Bagnoli and these Quarto, Bacioli, Monte di Procida. Um, also some reports arrived from even further away. So although it looks as a number only 2.1, these earthquakes there, they're really felt white in a widespread area. So let's get to it. That seismic swarm that is currently still underway, it has not ended, has caused a cliff to collapse in Bacholi. <laughs> So that was just a few minutes after the 4.0 shock, there was a ridge that has collapsed in Bacholi. And uh, what they're saying after that, they had a meeting of officials and they say there is a maximum alert for this ongoing seismic swarm, maximum alert. So that has not only affected that ridge, it has also affected the circulation of the local metro line between Gian Turco and Villa Literno and a section um, of other areas have been suspended as a precaution in application of safety protocols. That's what they're saying. And also in Baia, there is an archeological site where they're working on that activity has also been suspended because of this earthquake swarm. So they're saying activities should resume as soon as security checks on the metro routes are completed. But while the seismic swarm is ongoing, I mean, they have to do ongoing checks because something might happen. So they're worried that something maybe could collapse. And so look at this video. There, there you see the water, you see swimmers, you see tourists in the water. And then basically this happened before the magnitude four. There wasn't really a warning that something might happen. So it's basically a cliff or a ridge or whatever you might call it has collapsed in Bacholi and the debris ends up in the sea just a few meters away from the swimmers. And if you're swimming there and something either falls on you or it also creates some kind of wave or dust, um, 
if you're not an experienced swimmer or if you're elderly or whatever, this can get really, really dangerous. So they say it's a mountain ridge that collapsed in the Marina Grande area of Bacholi. So this has collapsed basically roughly 15 minutes after the 4.0 earthquake. So it seems people still remained in the water after the earthquake. So nobody was worried about a tsunami or whatever. You don't know where the epicenter was or what happened, right? Um, if you have seen my video about Marzilli, if there's, that's an underground, underwater volcano, if there's a landslide or something that could cause a tsunami, and even if it's only like half a meter or whatever, so they don't know. I would just get out of the water, definitely, but you know, whatever. Maybe they didn't feel it that much in the water, who knows? But you can see how this slides down and the dust that it creates. So the Italian newspapers are writing moments of fear around 2 p.m. today in Bacioli. So it seems where this cliff did collapse in the sea, it's the Marina Grande area and Cento Camerele area. Um, that's a complex, that's a, an, an ancient complex. They call it like it's an important Roman archaeological monument. It was a hydraulic system from the first century AD. So I hope that nothing has been damaged there, but it has survived for quite a long time. It was built solid. So you can see in some videos that have gone viral and that have been published on social media, you can see the collapse and you can see the debris that is then detached from the cliff and ends up directly into the sea below a few meters from where some swimmers are. But at the moment, what we know at the moment, fortunately, nobody has been injured. There is a beach in that area and, and that sounds kind of scary because it's the beach is called the beach under the cave. So was this directly underneath? They said everything this area was immediately cleared and cordoned off and it was also of course makes sense subject to a bathing ban. This is not the first one this month. So already this month in July in the coastal area of Campi Flegre there were two collapses or slides that have already occurred and both almost in the same place there in Monte di Porcida. So one near the beach of Miliscola and on these two occasions too it was the mountain slope overlooking the sea that had collapsed. So if you're there, if you're swimming, stay away from any elevated areas that could cause a landslide. Better if you're on a beach, be in the middle, be aware of your surroundings. That's what I would say. So definitely what we can say about this earthquake swarm, it's rattling the population again. It's scaring the population. They say they have to be at maximum alert. We have to wait. Was that it? Is there more to come? What's going on? Will there be bigger earthquakes again? But usually it dies down after this a little bit and then a few days and then the next one comes. But we've seen like the four and then two in the one range and then a higher one again, right? We had like the 4.0, the 1.7, 1.0. You think it might go down, but then whoopsie, it went up to 2.1 again. So we will have to see what's going on. And of course, guys, I will keep you updated about this. And hey, I wanted to ask you, are you still interested in what's going on in Iceland with that volcano there? Um, I just released a video um, with interesting updates that let, we'll let you know what the town of Grindavik probably has to face with the next eruption. But when I look at my YouTube statistics, it says less of your regular viewers are interested in this topic. They're not watching it. And that's why YouTube is not promoting it to new viewers, right? Which would be good for my channel. So let me know if you're not interested in uh, Iceland and Grindavik anymore. Um, I will do more other topics and leave that behind, right? So you're my viewers, so what you're interested in, that's what I will provide. So let me know. Um, 
because I see in the statistics that you're losing interest in that. So we can move on to other topics if you like. So let me know about this, guys. I'm having more coffee. I'm still a little bit more tired. I have to walk the doggies. Rudy is eagerly waiting and the horses are waiting for me. So stay safe wherever you are, guys. I talk to you soon with another update. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye.